going on vinyl community welcome to another video with the record spinner in today's video i'm going to be doing a vinyl haul showcasing all of the records that i've acquired within the months of september and october of this year 2019 uh this particular haul turned out to be rather special because when it comes to me you know getting records within a certain time frame and compiling these clips to make these hauls there's no premeditative step, you know, as I go along the process of buying and adding albums to my collection. I'm kind of just going with the flow of time and just letting whatever, you know, comes my way, comes my way, essentially. Um, I gotta say, I got my hands on some really fantastic albums within these past two months. Uh, some records that I never thought I would own, simply because copies are becoming scarce, and I kind of missed out on the hype of these releases when they first came out. Price drops, new reissues, even uh, different types of records that I um, had never owned previously. What exactly are they? Watch this video to find out. Like all my haul videos, they do run a little bit in length, so please sit back, relax, and enjoy the latest finds. All right, so we're going to start this haul off with a Amazon price drop. Uh, this dropped to around $12 when I came across it, and it was back ordered, and it was going to be some time before it would be back in stock. So I placed an order on it, and I figured whenever I received it is whenever that would be, and uh, turned out to receive a bit earlier here in the beginning of September. It is the American debut release from the Rolling Stones. Uh, this is called England's Newest Hitmakers. Um, a variation of this particular album came out in the UK, and I believe it was just called The Rolling Stones, like as like a self-titled or Rolling Stones number one, something like that, to indicate the debut release. Um, this is essentially a full-on covers album. You get a lot of like R&B uh, standards on here, like Route 66 and I'm a King Bee and Carol, you know, old Chuck Berry type songs. But then you get one Jagger Richards composition called Tell Me. Um, this is going to go hand in hand with uh, 12 by 5 as sort of my entryway into the early Stone stuff. And uh, we're kicking it all the way back to the beginning with this album. So this will be a uh, fresh listen for sure. Here is the sleeve, which has the guys all looking young and youthful. And here's the backside. Rather nice. This comes in a nice polylined uh, sleeve. And the vinyl itself is gorgeous. Uh, it's a nice heavyweight press. Really cool custom label there. Really cool. And um, there's etchings to indicate that this was pressed over at Rainbow Records in California. But um, I believe this was done over at Palace because I see um, the Palace etchings here in the Dead Wax. And also, just to point it out, this was mastered by... Uh, Don Grossinger, and this was also um, utilized by the direct metal mastering process, which I'll talk about in a later video. And there's also, you can't really see it, uh, maybe you can in, in the middle of the center hole, uh, there's a DSD uh, label, which is called Direct Stream Digital, which is a process which is used in the manufacturing of Super Audio CDs. So if anything, I expect this pressing to sound absolutely wonderful because when it comes to that process, they try to extract a as much data as there is, not that it's data, but from the original analog source. Um, the KISS reissues to use uh, Direct Stream Digital, those sound fantastic, and I'm sure this is going to be a pleasant listen indeed. Rolling Stones, England's newest hit makers. All right, so it seems like these hauls always start off with a bang. And uh, with this one, I think this is the biggest bang that I'm starting on. Um, a lot of records have come in within these past two days or so. Most of them came in on one day, but I'm gonna show them all here in one go. Um, you could say that this is worthy of getting its own video here on the channel, but I just figured, you know, these are just basic, you know, acquisitions. I'll showcase them here on the big haul. Um, this first one is one that I placed an order on through a seller on lp.reverb.com, and I had a $10 uh, voucher, which got me 10 bucks off the order, which brought it down to a price, which I thought was rather low, um, just in general for this particular pressing, um, cause I have not really seen it drop elsewhere. And this filled a hole in my classic overall Kansas, uh, um, collection. And that is the live album two for the show. So this album came out back in 1978. This was recorded during the, uh, point of no return, uh, tour. 
fantastic set list. Essentially, the key component tracks in that whole sort of early phase of the band's career. Uh, you get your song for America, which opens the album. Uh, Paradox, Icarus, Portrait, Journey, uh, Journey from Mary Abron, uh, Mysteries and Mayhem. I mean, Closet Chronicles as well. There's a fantastic version of that on this album. This is truly phenomenal stuff. Uh, this is the Friday Music uh, version, which was done back in 2015. Uh, comes with the classic uh, trippy kind of looking gatefold. And um, we also get a rather nice uh, little fold-out insert, which has uh, what would be on the uh, inner bags with the original album. So they put them here as an insert, which is nice. And uh, it's a 2LP set, of course, uh, pressed over at RTI. We have nice custom labels here, and this was also mastered by Kevin Gray, which I was not aware of until I looked in the Dead Wax. I kind of figured it might have been like Ron McMaster, who does all, um, a lot of the other um, Friday music titles. Kevin Gray kind of does some of the more notable like audiophile album ones, uh, but it was really cool to see that he did uh, this album here, so I'm really excited to see uh, what this album sounds like. And then these next two albums, uh, pretty much the rest of these I'm going to show in this first bit are from Amazon. Uh, so the two I'm going to show are um, are albums that I actually picked up with some uh, rewards points that I just stumbled across lately. Uh, the bank that I use, um, I noticed, does this thing where if you use your debit card um, under a credit transaction, for every dollar you spend, uh, you get points and you can redeem those points for prizes like gift cards to restaurants, shopping centers, whatever. So of course, since uh, I use Amazon quite frequently, I'm a Prime member and everything, I got some uh, Amazon cards, about $35 worth. And I went ahead and picked up these two albums that I was itching to get, mainly because I wanna showcase them in a future video that I'm gonna do sometime down the road on this channel coming very soon. And also, I just simply wanted them to begin with, and I'll talk a little bit about them in terms of their history. So the two albums I'm talking about kinda go hand in hand. Uh, we have two posthumous Jimi Hendrix releases. We have The Cry of Love and the soundtrack to Rainbow Bridge. Now, both of these albums feature material that Hend Hendrix was working on at the time before he passed away. So it's a lot of songs which would be featured on the first rays of the new Rising Sun album, which was kind of an attempt to sort of assemble what Jimi had in mind for his unreleased fourth album. Uh, this was the first uh, posthumous release, which uh, came out back in 1971, I want to say, and this followed suit after. Um, I've never seen the film to Rainbow Bridge. Um, I'm not at all a Hendrix expert. I'm assuming it's all catered to Hendrix, and there's a lot of like concert uh, footage and such, so it's essentially a document to the film. Now, some of the posthumous um, Hendrix releases, particularly later on in the 70s, are, are really controversial. Uh, mainly because of uh, Alan Douglas's um, tampering with the tapes and using session musicians and replacing parts and whatnot. But a lot of people look uh, fondly um, at these two particular albums. So the Hendrix Estate decided to reissue these two albums from the old school 70s catalog. I'll just showcase the artwork uh, for these. Here, here's a nice little sunset on the back. And we have a nice photo collage as the gatefold. And like all Hendrix releases, rice paper inner sleeves, pressed to quality records, nice custom label. This one's a really nice uh, black and blue one, which is cool. And then for Rainbow Bridge, here's the artwork. Some uh, snapshots from the film. And then same deal, MoFi sleeves custom labels. This particular pressing of Rainbow Bridge is actually pressed on 200 gram vinyl and of all the Hendrix vinyl pressings I have this is the most heaviest uh, feeling one. Just a little interesting note I should point out. It feels rather rather nice. So I'm really excited to see what uh, these two albums sound like. And then up next was just a, um, a price drop that I just bought out of pocket. $14 for a 2LP set. I've seen this thing go for about $25 as like a high average. And I figured I'd jump on the opportunity. This is Playback, the Brian Wilson anthology. Uh, this is a 2LP set of um, 
songs from Brian's solo career. Um, it does not focus majorly on Beach Boy stuff. Um, you do get like a small hint of that with uh, Surf's Up and Heroes and Villains, but that's mainly because those two songs were on the Smile album that he had put together in like 2003, 2004. Um, you get stuff from his first album from the 80s and everything that he's done uh, since then. There's the Imagination album. There's also the Getting Over My Head um, album. There's also, what was it? Was it Orange? Oh, That Lucky Old Son. That was the one. It had the orange on the cover. And he also contributes a couple of newer tracks on here as well. Comes with a nice gatefold of the man himself in the studio. You get the credits here. And then we also get a rather nice write-up on an insert, which includes photographs, which is really, really nice. Nice package overall. I'll showcase one of the LPs. Polyline sleeve. Nice heavyweight vinyl press. Custom labels included. Absolutely amazing stuff. Um, in terms of Brian's solo stuff, I mean, of course, I'm a Beach Boys fan. But uh, with his solo stuff, like I love that um, 80s album that he did. Um, it's it's kind of interesting considering the climate around Brian's personal life at that time with Eugene Landy and everyone else. So it's you kind of have to take it for what it is. But honestly, there's brilliant work on there. But in terms of like after that album, I'm not too fond of his solo stuff. It's just simply because I haven't gotten to it. It's not that I have a distaste or a dislike. Uh, I just have to work my way through it. So if anything, this will be a rather nice primer to get me through some of Brian's solo work. Playback, the Brian Wilson anthology. And then uh, we have some albums that I picked up with my Discover cashback bonus. Uh, it was rather high this time around because I figured out, because um, this quarter of the year it was restaurants and PayPal. So I decided to use my Discover card to, to a great extent and I got a lot of points in uh, cashback back. So first is actually a band that I don't have any albums of in my collection. And this is a band that I've been listening to a lot within the past several months or so and i've held off on getting albums of theirs for a very long time and i finally jumped on getting a copy of this particular album which is chocked full of hits this is Ario speedwagon high infidelity um i'm sure everyone had this album back when this came out don't let him go keep on loving you uh take it on the run of course i mean it's you you know these songs when you hear them uh, Follow My Heart is one of my personal favorites on this. It wasn't really a hit, but it's it's a really you know rocking tune. Tough Guys is another one that um, I'm aware of. Uh, Someone Tonight, I Wish You Were There. Classic, you know, Ario Speedwagon album. This is the Friday Music version. Uh, Friday Music did this a couple times. Uh, the first time around was back in 2010. Get a gatefold sleeve with the band on this side and lyrics on here. Uh, but this particular pressing, which was done fairly recently, um, is actually pressed on really, really nice blue vinyl. And it was kind of interesting because I think I had the black vinyl version on my Amazon list for the longest time. And that was kind of priced rather high. And then I saw this newly pressed uh, blue vinyl version, which was priced lower. So it's kind of interesting how that worked out. And this is also pressed at RTI, mastered by Kevin Gray. It's the stuff that audiophiles love, so I'm really excited to see uh, what he does with this particular album. And up next, we have some progressive metal goodness with the third album from Dream Theater. This is Awake, which came out back in 1994. Uh, this was Kevin Moore's last album with the band as keyboardist. Um, this is just classic Dream Theater stuff. Uh, Six O'Clock is a great tune. Caught in a Web um, is a coulda, woulda, shoulda been a hit. Um, you get the Mind Behind Itself suite with Erotomania, Voices in the Silent Man, The Mirror Lie, the very Floyd-influenced uh, Lifting Shadows Off a Dream, uh, Space Divest. I mean, this is just sensational stuff. Uh, this was put out by the Music on Vinyl label, which is based out in the Netherlands. Um, all their product is fantastic. It's just amazing quality. You get nice artwork, inserts. Really, really cool stuff. And wonderful pressings. Um, I think I mentioned this before. Um, the 
pressing plant uh, record industry is owned by Music on Vinyl, so all of the Music on Vinyl stuff is done over at Music Industry, and they're just absolutely flawless pressings, um, little to no surface noise, um, just amazing quality altogether. So um, I'm really excited to relive this album because it's been a while since I listened to it. Um, I remember listening to it faithfully when I was in um, in middle school. I was a really big uh, Dream Theater fanboy back when I was in like seventh grade. And we are getting to the end of the Amazon stuff. Uh, this is Ramon's Leave Home. This is one of the newer uh, pressings that uh, was done for it. Remastered um, from 2018, I want to say. Fantastic sophomore effort from the Ramones. Um, you get Glad to See You Go, Gimme Gimme Shock Treatment, I, rem re bleh, I Remember You, Pinhead, Commando, one of my favorites, Swallow My Pride. It's a nice little poppy tune that they do on here. Uh, what's Susie is a headbanger, Carbona Knock Lou. I mean, it's just those first three Ramones albums is the Bible to punk rock. Everyone goes on about the Sex Pistols and everyone, these guys had it down. Uh, this reissue comes with a rather nice uh, printed inner sleeve here. So you have the lyrics on this side, so you can go ahead and sing along. And then we have a nice photo of the band. And then the vinyl itself comes on nice heavyweight black vinyl. Uh, this is on the, uh, of course, on the old school Sire label there. This was pressed at Record Industry as well, and this was also mastered by Ray Janos, which is fantastic. Uh, Ray Janos actually engineered uh, the Road to Ruin album, so it's kind of cool that he's also doing some of the vinyl mastering for some of the recent uh, Ramones products, because he's done quite a lot. I think he's done all of the standard uh, regular album reissues in the recent years, so um, I have no doubts that this is going to be a uh, wonderful sounding pressing. And the last record I'm going to show in this bit is uh, one that I actually picked up um, at a record store called the Record Museum in Berlin, New Jersey. Um, the girlfriend and I, we did kind of like an early birthday celebration because my birthday falls on September 13th, which is a Friday, Friday the 13th. So we did this all-day venture um, just doing a whole bunch of activities. Uh, we went to the broadcasting studio where um, Preston and Steve broadcast at uh, for 93.3 in Philadelphia, which was fantastic. Uh, we had a great lunch out. We had a nice dinner at the local village in our near our hometown. Uh, we went to a farm and visited animals and stuff, all kinds of things. But of course, a day catered to my birthday is not complete until you hit a record store. And uh, this store was really, really cool. They had all kinds of old, like, different types of novelty records and older pressings and just all kinds of really nice collectible albums. But I saw this on the wall with some of the newer stuff, and I believe this was from a record store day in the past. And I have encountered this online several times and just never paid much attention to it. Uh, but the uh, guy that ran the shop gave me a rather sweet deal because my girlfriend and I, we were kind of making conversation with him. So, you know... It's good to rub elbows from time to time with your local record store owners. So I picked up this little 10-inch release. Uh, this is Jimi Hendrix Morning Symphony Ideas. So essentially, this is um, some rough sketches of what would be on the first rays of the new Rising Sun album, like Room Full of Mirrors, and then you get some demos like Jungle and Stratostrut. Um, really interesting release, uh, which kind of delves deeper into the sort of creative mindset of Hendrix. Comes with a little uh, insert, which kind of explains all the songs here, which is rather nice. And the record itself is indeed limited edition. To how many, I'm not sure. But this comes pressed on yellow vinyl with a nice purple label, which is really nice. So wow, we! I seriously could have done a video by itself of all those records that I just showcased. But um, if anything, I hope that uh, this haul started off with a big bang for you, the viewers. And I can definitely say for sure it started off with that for myself. Jimi Hendrix, Morning Symphony Ideas. <laughs>
All right, so for this clip, I have a special guest with me. This is my girlfriend, Sam, a.k.a. the CD player that you've seen on many record store vlogs. Uh, in this clip, um, I'm going to show you guys a record that actually just came out today. Uh, it's a reissue. Uh, this came out on Friday, September 13th, Friday the 13th, which is also my birthday. I just turned the big 22. And uh, this is an album that has never been reissued on vinyl before. And I had only became aware of this particular reissue just scrolling through um, Amazon pre-order links uh, for records by this particular band. And um, let's just say this fills in a gap in between studio releases uh, in my Aerosmith uh, vinyl collection. And that is their 1978 live album, Live Bootleg. Um, this is up there as being one of the best live albums to come out uh, from the 70s. Um, Aerosmith was such a raw rockin' band at this point, and you can really sense that um, on this particular album. Um, you get Back in the Saddle, Sweet Emotion, Lord of the Thighs, Last Child, Sick as a Dog, which is one of my favorites. Uh, what's What else is on this? Chip Away the Stone. You'll also get some old school live recordings from 1973 with I Ain't Got You and Mother Popcorn. Ends with Train Kept a Rollin'. It's absolutely excellent stuff. You get the classic gatefold sleeve here, which is absolutely nice. I remember my parents had an old vinyl copy of this, and just seeing this gatefold brings back a lot of memories, because just I remember this stuff vividly. Um, we also get uh, two printed inner sleeves. I'm not going to showcase the records, because the sleeves are printed inner sleeves and I don't want to scuff them up, but they all come on that red Columbia label. You guys know exactly what they look like, but you essentially get pictures of the band here. And then you also kind of get like a track by track annotation in terms of where it was recorded, the significance behind the recording and the song itself, which is quite insightful and the added bonus. And I was not aware that this came with original pressings. But it kind of made sense because I remember seeing this in the CD booklet when this was when the CD was done back in the early 90s. Uh, this comes with a poster, which has some cool live shots on the bottom of each band member and a great stage shot right here. Absolutely great. This will look good in the bedroom. I'm kidding. I'm keeping this intact. So <laughs> I am truly, truly happy that uh, this album got uh, a reissue. And uh, this is one that I'm going to be most definitely excited to spin. Aerosmith Live Bootleg. All right, so here is another new release, which came out on the same day as the Aerosmith Live Bootleg re-release. But I kind of received it a bit late. Um, I received it today, which is Tuesday, September 17th. Better late than never, of course. And I think perhaps it was in high demand. Um, apparently, it's back ordered on Amazon for about a month or so. So I guess a lot of people are going after it. Um, it is the latest release from Alice Cooper. This is the Breadcrumbs EP. Um, this is pretty much Alice paying a homage to his Detroit roots. Um, he does covers of songs by artists such as the MC5 and Susie Quattro. He has Wayne Kramer uh, playing guitar on this release, as well as a member from the uh, Detroit Wheels. So it's him pretty much, you know, paying his respects to that whole sound, which um, idealized the early Alice Cooper sound. Um, we get a nice uh, black, white, and red cover here. We have the eyes from the gatefold of Love It to Death. And... Inside, we have a little insert here, which promotes the uh, Hollywood Vampires album, which Alice is in alongside Johnny Depp and Joe Perry. And then we have some advertisements for the Paranormal studio album and the live album, which came out um, sometime after the studio album. And it even says, excuse me, here, watch out for the new Alice Cooper album in 2020. So perhaps this is a hint of what is to come in the future. Nice uh, printed sleeve here with the die cut for the label. And here is the vinyl itself. Nice piece of 10-inch uh, vinyl. Custom white labels. And um, really quite excited to give this a spin. Uh, I was very pleased with the stuff that he did on the Paranormal Studio album. So uh, we shall see what this sounds like and if it is going to be a uh, hint of what will come on his next record. Alice Cooper, Breadcrumbs EP. 
All right, so here is an Amazon price drop that I've had my eye on for quite some time. And I just kind of figured that the timing was right to pull the trigger on it because it was at the lowest price that I had seen it at. And it was at that for a couple of days. And I just figured I'd pull the trigger on it. And I'm telling you, no bullshit when I say this. When that happens, like about a day later, it goes back up in price. Now, granted, it went back up a couple dollars, which is not too big of a difference, but a double album for $14 is not bad of a deal at all. So I picked up Elton John's Blue Moves, and the Elton John collection just seems to be growing and growing by the months. So I decided to give this album a shot. This came out around... I want to say 76, and uh, this was kind of the end of sort of Elton's sort of golden period, uh, starting from Honky Chateau and going through like Yellow Brick Road, Caribou, Rock of the Westies, you know, this was the one album that did not reach number one, so things started to kind of slip for the time being, um, of course, it's notable for featuring sorry uh, seems to be the hardest word. The lyrical content is a little bit more on the sort of moodier uh, side. Um, and it kind of makes sense because Bernie Taupin was going through a divorce at the time. So it's reflective in the lyrics, which kind of ties into the name of the album. Absolutely love the painting on the cover. We have a nice skatefold, which has Elton and the gang. And then we have Elton on this side. It's a two LP set. It's the uh, second uh, double album that Elton did alongside Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. We have a printed inner sleeve here with uh, Bernie Taupin on the bottom corner. I'll showcase one of these. The other one looks pretty much the same to this with the other lyrics. But we have a nice 180 gram vinyl press. And it comes on that nice custom rocket record company uh label there with a the train which looks very very good and yet all of these elton john albums that i've been getting whether it's don't shoot me i'm only the piano player uh tumbleweed connection you know it's really showing me how gifted elton was as a performer and how gifted bernie was as a songwriter so i've been getting more and more impressed with these elton john albums as i'm listening to them and i'm pretty sure i will still be impressed when i give this album a spin elton john blue moves all right, so here is a record that I actually picked up at the King Crimson show that I saw tonight at the Met in Philadelphia. Fantastic show. It was my second time seeing them. And uh, just to hear Cat Food, Red, and Islands live, is it was well worth the money that I forked out for a ticket. So, of course, with like all shows that I go to, I always see um, if there's any vinyl being sold. And I had been following the Reddit posts saying, oh, they're selling in the court, they're selling the Live in Montreal set, they're selling a box set of older albums. So I just kind of took it with a grain of salt and just kind of said to myself, when I get there and I see what's there, then that is what will be. And they had this particular release there that I had been wanting to get for a... Uh, a long time. Um, this came out last year, and I had meant to kind of place an order on it, but I just never really got around to it. Um, and also, I really had to justify paying a decent price for what it is, which is a double 10-inch EP. Uh, but I saw this opportunity as, it's a show, this will act as a souvenir, and a long-lasting souvenir. So I finally decided to snag it tonight, and that is... The Uncertain Times double EP. So this came out to coincide with the Uncertain Times tour that was done last year. Um, I believe it was in Europe and the rest of the world. It never came to the U.S. But they released this uh, EP uh, to kind of coincide with the tour. And it was sold at the merchandise stands. And uh, they made it available on Amazon and other retailers. And like I said, I just never really got around to getting it. But tonight was a good opportunity. So you get um, one track on each side of a 10-inch record. And as you see here, those are the songs listed. So we have Red, The Letters, Circus, and Lark's Tongues and Aspic Part 2. So great selection overall. And um, each rec uh, song is from a different live release that they have put out recently since they've been back together. So we have stuff from Live in Mexico, uh, Live in Chicago... Uh, live in Vienna, and then also the Radical Action uh, release. Opens up like this. We have the assorted faces 
adorning the 10 inch sleeve. The records come in printed black uh, inner sleeves, so you kind of have to be careful. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to make 10 inch sleeves for this one. So there's the center labels, which is essentially all the the faces and imagery from the gatefold, which is quite nice. Now, aside from this release, um, we only have Live at the Orpheum and Live in Toronto as the only uh, live vinyl releases by this incarnation of King Crimson. So hopefully we will see more in the future, but in the meantime, I think this is quite a uh, interesting, nice little addition to the King Crimson live vinyl collection on certain times. All right, so this next record I got is one that I picked up uh, with some points that were on my Amazon Prime card. I paid a little bit out of pocket for it, but this was an album that I had been itching to get for a long time, uh, mainly because it is the last studio album that I need uh, by this band, and it also fills a gap in my collection of this particular band. Now, granted, I don't really go back to this album as much as perhaps some of the others. And when I say others, I mean the other two. Uh, but I'm hoping that listening to this particular pressing and just, you know, investing myself in it, um, things will perhaps click. So, I'm talking about... Nirvana's In Utero. So this came out back in 1993. Of course, this was the last studio album that the band would do since Kurt Cobain's passing came the next year. Um, on this, you get um, Heart Shaped Box, of course, All Apologies, uh, Penny Royalty, which is one of my personal favorites of theirs, uh, Serve the Servants, which is a cool opener, and then you also get Scentless Apprentice, which has one of the most badass drum intros ever. It's just absolutely killer. And um, the band had kind of intended to go back to a more grittier sound as opposed to the spit polish sound that was established on Nevermind. So I think in a way, between their first album and this, um, they're a bit more true to the band's nature, I would say. Um, this is a recent reissue that was done by the um, Universal Back on Black series, which I believe was a couple years ago. Um, here is a printed inner sleeve where we have lyrics on this side and we have some photos here. Take out the vinyl, try my best not to scuff it. I say that after having taken the record out and then I put it back in the sleeve. Once I get to listening to it, then I'll put it in a nice anti-static one. So here is the black Geffen label. And honestly, I couldn't decipher exactly where this was priced at, but this is one of the most gorgeous looking records in my collection. Granted, it's black vinyl, but it just has a nice gloss finish to it. Like, I don't know, it just looks so good and really nice condition too for having been in a printed inner sleeve. Um, perhaps this may have been recently pressed, I'm not quite sure, but just it looks absolutely beautiful. Now, in the past, I have encountered this album many times. Um, I saw this particular pressing at a record store, uh, which had it marked up for a ridiculous price. Um, and then when I was working at, um, at Books A Million for a period, um, I had actually seen uh, that we sold the 2013 remix, which was mastered at 45. And I figured when it came to this album, since you know I don't go back to it as often as some of the others, um, I figured I'd just stick with a basic 33 and a third uh, reissue of the original mix and uh, really excited to give this album a spin and invest more time into it. Nirvana's in utero. All right, so along with getting the Beatles Abbey Road 50th Anniversary 3LP vinyl box set today, I also received another reissue which also came out today and um, is another one in a series of ongoing deluxe editions of classic albums uh, from this band's particular catalog. And this time around, it is a live album and we have a whole bunch of goodies that came with this particular package. So this is the Ramones' It's Alive. So this is the 40th Anniversary Deluxe Edition. And what's really interesting with this album is that this has never gotten a proper U.S. vinyl release. Um, the copy that I had prior, which I did in my vinyl giveaway, was a music on vinyl pressing, which is based out of the Netherlands. So when this was announced, I figured that that album would be a good contender for the giveaway, and I can get my hands on um, this particular version, which is simply not because it's a new version, but we also get 
three unreleased concerts, which were recorded at the time when this album was recorded. Uh, this was recorded at the Rainbow Theater in 1977 on New Year's Eve. But there's other shows from like days leading up to that New Year's Eve show that were recorded and I guess were considered for consideration, but never came out. And we finally got those here on the set along with the main album on CD and vinyl. So here is the backside. And this is also numbered as well. I have copy number 7022. And it opens up just like this. So we have all of the CDs on this side. But here is the really cool thing with the vinyl. Opens up again. And there you have it. That is the gatefold with the original It's Alive album. Um, I'm not going to take out the records, but they essentially have all of the old school Sire labels and everything's replicated. Nice pressings from, uh, from I believe it's Optimal, and they're also mastered by Joe uh, Nino Hernes from Sterling Sound. And we also get a very nice book, which has all kinds of photographs from the time. Nice little write-up by producer Steve Albini, who talks about the album more photographs and then we also get a little bit from uh, producer Ed Stasium who was behind the production of this record uh, kind of gives a little insight on the UK tour that was going on at the time just a really nice read I'm really gonna enjoy digging through the essays in this and also listening again to one of the best rock live albums of all time not just punk rock one of the best live rock albums ever. So I'm so happy that they did the 40th anniversary treatment with this classic album, It's Alive. And we also have uh, some really good deep discount finds. And um, I'm telling you, today was a great mail day overall, I should mention. Um, so the retailer um, Import CDs was running a sale on their eBay page, which I actually stumbled across after joining uh, Reddit. And I'm telling you, if you are not signed up on Reddit, do so now because you can easily get your hands on some really great finds once you find out about certain sales and price drops and whatnot. So anyways, um, they dropped prices down majorly on select titles, and if you spent like $65 or more, you'll get an additional 20%. Needless to say, I did not spend over 65 mainly because I just really couldn't find anything that was of good value because I didn't want to just buy stuff for the sake of just getting the discount. Like, granted, I could have, but... I wanted to be smart with money, and um, let's just say with the prices of these albums that I got in general, I was very wise, and I thought getting them at these prices was absolutely justifiable. So, first up, I got these albums I'm going to show here for $7.50, and they are new pressings, shrink-wrapped and everything. For that price, I thought, why not? Give it a shot. And also give these albums a shot too because um, these are three albums that I'm not too fond of in the Beach Boys career. But I figured that this would be a, a great way to kind of uh, get into the water so to speak. There we go. So we have this one here. This is the MIU album which stands for Maharishi uh, International University which was where the album was recorded probably due to uh, Mike's uh, Mike Love's suggestion. Uh, this came out in 1978. Uh, Brian has a little bit of input on this. Like He did the whole Brian's Back thing with 15 big ones. He did Beach Boys Love You, but then after that, kind of fizzled out just a little bit. And um, on this, you got uh, Come Go With Me. Like That's the hit off of this. Um, hey Little Tomboy, I know that's Brian's contribution. Kona Coast, which is a Mike Love thing. Um, it's essentially following the tracks of the whole nostalgia thing that these guys were really, you know, riding the coattails on, uh, especially at this part of their career. You know, still making music, but just not having that appeal that albums like Pet Sounds and other subsequent works had just in terms of being innovative. But that's not to say that the songs are bad. I mean, I've heard bits and pieces of this album, and I enjoyed what I heard. It's just... You kind of sense that feeling. But anyways, we have a printed inner sleeve here, which has all the lyrics and credits. Um, the, all the labels between these three albums are on the um, 
Capital um, Brother Records label. I'll showcase one of them. I'm not going to showcase them all, but you'll essentially see what they look like. Right there, you can see my uh, my light right there. Nice pressings indeed. Nice heavyweight pressings. And then the other album next up in the sequence is... L.A. Light Album. This came out the subsequent year in 79. And at this point, they brought back Bruce Johnston as being sort of a working member within the band and contributing ideas. He's back in the fold. Uh, apparently, Carl and Dennis were kind of not so involved with MIU, so they brought Bruce in, and Brian's involvement's really getting diminished. So it's kind of a weird kind of flux kind of period with these guys. Um... Good Timing is the notable track on this, and you also get, I think it's a 10-minute disco version of Here Comes the Night, which is a song which is on the Wild Honey album from 1967, and honestly, that is a fantastic track on that album, but the disco version, it's a product of the time. Now, this includes a really, really nice um, picture sleeve with various live shots of the band, Pictures I've certainly have never seen before, which is really nice. Comes on the um, the Capital Brother uh, label. And then the next one up is... Keeping the Summer Alive. Now, right off the bat, I absolutely love this cover. So it's, it's as if like they're in a snow globe kind of dome setting, and it's like summer inside of the dome. But then you have the snow in the wintertime atmosphere outside of that dome. So they're keeping the summer alive. Get it? Here's the backside. And what's on this? We have Endless Harmony. That's like the notable one on here. School Days, which is the um, the Chuck Berry uh, cover tune. That was like Brian's suggestion because he was really big on doing the covers and whatnot. Oh, Darlin, uh, Keeping the Summer Alive, of course. The title track, Going On, Sunshine. The typical stuff. And then we have another printed inner sleeve here with various photos of the band in the studio. So yeah, like I said, when it comes to some of the late 70s going into the early 80s Beach Boy stuff, I'm not too fond of it. I mean, I've heard bits and pieces on various compilations and box sets, and I liked what I heard. But digging into these albums more, I think, will be quite the, um, the mission when it comes to spinning these three albums. And then along with those albums, I got this one for a whopping $9, which compared to the $30 price tag that it normally has, absolute bang for the buck. And I figured for that price, why not? So I got the Beach Boys with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Now, I remember when this came out. This came out just about a year ago. And um, I was seeing a lot of hype around it, and I thought it was interesting what they did with the bare vocals of the Beach Boys. They kind of stripped away some of the Wrecking Crew backing tracks and just added orchestrations, which I think works rather well. It's a different take on the music, uh, but I didn't really go too crazy getting it when it first came out. And they recently did a orange vinyl um, color variant for this, and I had it on my Amazon list, just thinking maybe one day. But when I saw this for nine bucks. You know, I'm all about the sound quality. Um, I'm not dead set on getting color variants if there is a cheaper alternative out there. But if I don't have something and, you know, it, I have my rules when it comes to it. But basically, this is the standard black version. And, um, yeah, we get a decent selection of tracks. You get your hits like Kokomo and, you know, God Only Knows, Wouldn't It Be Nice, California Girls. But we also get some rather interesting tracks, like Here Today, which is on Pet Sounds. It's one of the more obs obscure tracks on that. You Still Believe in Me, which is on Pet Sounds as well. And a really nice edition of Bruce Johnston's masterpiece, Disney Girls, from the Surf's Up album. So, really nice selection. Uh, here is the Gatefold, which kind of has a track-by-track -track breakdown in terms of who did what. And um, the orchestrations, if you're curious, were recorded at Studio 2 at Abbey Road, which I believe was the Beatles studio. And even Pink Floyd did some work there as well. Comes in nice polyline sleeves. And here we have the vinyl itself on nice custom orange labels there, which is quite good. Put it 
back. And uh, yeah, like I said, this will be a rather interesting way of hearing some classic Beach Boys tunes done in a different orchestral setting. And then to kind of follow up with that Beach Boys kind of trend that has been going on with these past several albums, uh, the next one up I got for, I think it was about $8. And for going for $20 plus dollars retail value, I thought, give it a shot, why not? And also I'm slowly building up this particular Beach Boys solo collection. And I think, if anything, it might be the one big notable one, actually. So this is the latest solo album from Brian Wilson. This is No Peer Pressure. Um, with this album, um, he does a lot of collaborations. Uh, he does some stuff with uh, She and Him, um, Al Jardine, of course, uh, Blondie Chaplin, and a few others. So he does a lot of, you know collaborations on this which is cool and also this features the song uh one kind of love which appears on the love and mercy uh soundtrack and i really did particularly enjoy that uh particular tune so i figured give this album a shot and also for the price it's not bad at all there's the man himself in the gatefold sleeve and then we also get uh printed dinners here with lyrics and photos I'll showcase the vinyl. Now, here's a rather cool touch. I don't know if this was intentional. I kind of doubt it. It might have just been a generic move. But look at the labels. We just have basic purple capital labels, which kind of reminds me of those labels that Capital used for like some of the Beatles uh, reissues that they did in like the early 80s. I remember seeing them. My, my parents had some older... Uh, Beatles albums that had this purple capital label and just kind of reminds me of that. I think it's a really nice touch. This was also mastered by Bernie Grunman, so I'm sure it is of absolutely wonderful sound quality. Really can't wait to uh, to play this. I think I might play this with the girlfriend because she's a really big Brian Wilson fan. And now we break away from the whole Beach Boys Brian Wilson theme and we get into some progressive rock. Now, with this particular album, I do have a copy of this album. I have the original UK version, which is done on the Music on Vinyl label. But I remember seeing this record at Rock and Soul Records in New York City. I remember I went there with a girlfriend once when we went to Broadway. I did a whole video talking about what records I got from there. But I remember they had quite a good amount of, um, of copies of this particular Record Store Day release. And I was aware of it. But at the time, I was like, eh, what's the point, whatever. But then... As time goes on, your rules for collecting change. You start going after certain things that maybe you weren't going after at first. So I got bit by that bug, and I was hunting this particular album down online. And, you know, this thing came out as part of Record Store Day Black Friday in 2018. So this was just last year, so it's not like the value has skyrocketed high. And I looked on the Amazon listing of this because it was on there. And I noticed that Rock and Soul was selling their copies of it, and they were still sitting there. And I figured for the lowest possible price, with just a little bit of shipping, I am essentially, you know, outbeating what the Discogs and eBay sellers are selling them for. So, what exactly am I talking about? This is, yes, time and a word, the German version. Now, interesting thing with this. So... The cover for this is actually the American cover for the first um, Yes album. But what makes it the German version for Time in a Word is that they included the title Time in a Word right here. So that's kind of what makes it really distinguished. Now, aside from the cover, there's also some interesting stuff going on with the track list and the mixes. So there's alternate mixes used for the songs No Opportunity Necessary, No Experience Needed, and Sweet Dreams. And the song The Prophet is actually substituted with a song called Dear Father, which I believe was the B-side of the Sweet Dreams single. So it makes this rather unique for those reasons, and I figure for just having the different running order the different mixes and the cover itself, which to be honest, I mean, it's a rather cool photo cover. Might as well snag it. It'll stand as an interesting little variant of a classic Yes album. And also, aside from just the front cover being the American first album cover, we also get a rather unique back cover, which has the Yes sort of bubble with a picture of the band. 
<coughs> excuse me, polyline sleeve, and we have the classic green and red Atlantic labels, which is really, really nice. Nicely pressed as well. And also, this is limited to 4,000 copies. It's a shame, like, when things are limited, they don't number them, which kind of makes it somewhat deceiving. But I'll take it for what it is. And honestly, I'm just really glad to own this limited and interesting piece of Yes Vinyl to add to my collection. Yes, time in a word, the German version. All right, so here is yet another Amazon price drop, and uh, this is another album to kind of tag along some of the other albums that I have gotten by this particular band that you have seen already in this haul. Uh, pretty much comes from the exact same time frame. Not exactly in sequence with the other ones that I picked up earlier, uh, but it kind of starts that sort of general era. It is The Beach Boys with... 15 big ones. So this album came out back in 1976. Uh, this was pretty much the album to kind of capitalize on the whole Brian's back sort of deal where um, Brian Wilson essentially became a much more integral part to the band after kind of drifting in and out between the time frame of like Smiley Smile and the Holland album. So he finally made his return produced this entire album, arranged all the material, which is kind of like a mixture of originals and covers. Uh, the most notable covers on here are, um, there's Rock and Roll Music by uh, Chuck Berry, uh, Phil Spector's Chapel of Love, um, let's see, what else is there? Uh, Palisades Park, and then of course there's some originals on here, like It's Okay, that same song, Back Home, um, just a... Really, really great mid-70s uh, release from the Beach Boys themselves. Here is the Olympics-style kind of cover with the rings and each of the band members. Backside, which has all of the credits right there. And then what I love the most about this artwork is the gatefold, which is a really nice uh, photo collage of various photos from the times, past and present at the time. So like you see, there's uh, Murray Wilson, that was the Wilson's father. You have ticket stubs on the bottom. And then there's a picture of Brian in the bathtub with one of his daughters. And then of course, one of my favorite pictures, which is uh, this picture of him holding the, um, the gold disc for Endless Summer in his pool. Just really nice collage. And the vinyl itself, nice heavyweight 180 gram press. And it's on the Brother Records Capital label there. And this dropped to around $13 on Amazon. And I had like 8 or $9 as part of my Discover cashback bonus thingamajig. So I just paid a little bit out of pocket for it. But I figured for the price and um, just simply for the fact that I've been on such a big Beach Boys kick, I might as well snag this album and add it to the ever-growing Beach Boys collection. 15 big ones. All right, so we got some really awesome finds today, and uh, this particular uh, one that I'm going to show first uh, came from the Postal Service, and uh, this was a really awesome eBay find that I uh, stumbled across lately, and uh, it's been kind of a manhunt uh, because there had been a couple of releases like this that have come out on Record Store Days past these past couple of years. Um, and I did not pick them up at first, mainly because I had already had releases in my collection already of albums that pretty much bared the exact same track list of these Record Store Day releases. So I just didn't really see the need to pick them up. But as you get older, um, as a collector, your rules start to change and you start wanting certain things that you just kind of ignored at first. And you kind of have to sift through the aftermarket and try to avoid paying the exuberant prices that these things usually tend to go for. Uh, but considering this came out as part of Record Store Day 2018, the value has not surged incredibly high quite yet from what I have seen personally. I say that only having paid $30 to $35 for this particular record, which I think is close to what the retail value uh, should be, I think, for this. Um, I don't know exactly what it was going for um, on Record Store Day 2018 when this first came out, but needless to say, it's in my collection. And that is... David Bowie, Welcome to the Blackout, Live London 78. So this is taken from the 
Isolar Heroes Tour, uh, which was recorded in, the, in America uh, for the stage album, which is what I have in my collection. I have, I believe it is the 2017 version, uh, where they basically resequenced it to match the show, and they included some other songs that weren't featured prior and whatnot. Um, this release here bears the exact same track list, so there's nothing different between the two, except with stage being recorded in, in America. This focuses on one concert at Earl's Court, um, which was back in 78. And this was actually mixed by, I believe it was Bowie and David Richards back in 1979. For what use, I'm not quite sure, but uh, the Bowie camp has had it in their uh, archives and they decided to deliver it on Record Store Day 2018. And um, very basic black, sort of minimalistic black and white type of sleeve. The one thing I like is that the text has like a nice gloss finish while the cover itself has a nice matte finish and the same with the track list, which is really cool. We have a couple pictures inside which open up like this. We have the credits here, basic black middle there. And I'll just take out one of the records just to show them. Polyline sleeve. And for basically the main, like, first side of each record, you have just a basic uh, black center label. And then you have a sort of black and white mock-up of the RCA label there, where it says Bowie on the side, and it has the track list for the, uh, the particular LP. And also, another reason why I decided to snag this, aside from just simply wanting it in my collection, uh, this is also my favorite era of Bowie's. Like, I love that whole Berlin trilogy of Low, Heroes, and Lodger. And, uh, and also, I mean, like I said, for the price that I paid, I thought it was really good. And I now have to cr uh, track down the, um, I think it's the Cracked Actor live album, which was recorded in LA from 74. That one has really surged up in value. So I'm going to try to get that at a really good price. But for now, for starters, got my hands on Welcome to the Blackout. And up next um, are some Amazon finds. And I was just doing a little bit of gift shopping for my girlfriend's mother's birthday, which is right around the corner. And I saw this particular deal going on with certain products. And it was buy three for the price of two. So it was essentially a buy two, get one free kind of deal. And the cheapest one, that cheapest item that you get that was marked as part of the sale, you would get for free. So I noticed that there was some vinyl records on there and I checked it out and there was actually a pretty decent amount of stuff. And I managed to find three albums that um, I kind of been wanting to get for a while, surprisingly, I'm telling you. Luck was just on my side in terms of what I was you know, trying to look for. I could have gotten more, but I feel like that would have been a bit overkill uh, in terms of just albums that I've never really listened to before and it was just for the sake of getting them because of the sale going on. I was well within my right in this and I managed to pick up stuff that I actually really, really wanted. So first, I'm gonna show you guys, um, this is an album that got reissued fairly recently this year and I think I had a pre-order on it and I ended up canceling it because there was other stuff going on, but for the price, and I think this was the one that I got for free actually, um, it was absolutely well worth it. This is Aerosmith Greatest Hits. You can't go wrong with this compilation. Uh, this originally came out back in 1980, so it covers the first album up to Night in the Ruts. And honestly, it's so bare bones, it has everything that you need. You have your dream on, same old song and dance, sweet emotion, walk this way, last child. Draw the line, back in the saddle, you get the Beatles uh, cover, uh, come together. Remember Walking in the Sand, which was the main single off of Night in the Ruts. I mean, it's, it's essentially all the singles which came out at that time. So, nice reissue. Uh, comes on that classic red Columbia label. And then you also get an insert, which has track credits and a brief catalog run down there. So, really cool. I believe they reissued this earlier in the year, I want to say. They didn't do this at the time of Live Bootleg and um, Nine Lives. So, so this kind of came a little bit before those. But really, really glad that I have this in my Aerosmith collection. And up next was a little bit of a gap in my ACDC collection in terms of the sequence of releases that came out chronologically 
Although this particular release is kind of, I guess you could say, a compilation of sorts. It does kind of track back to the Bon Scott era. This came out back in 1984, and uh, this was one that I really needed in my collection, and I was finally able to snag it. And that is 74 Jailbreak. Now, a little bit of history behind this release. Um, for all you ACDC fans know, um, the catalog really differed between their native land of Australia and internationally within Europe, the States, and everywhere. So there were certain songs which were on some of those early albums and some singles and whatnot, which never found their way onto international albums. So what they did to kind of coincide with, I guess you could say it was the band's 10th anniversary back in 84, they did this compilation uh, which is titled after the song Jailbreak, which is on the Australian version of Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. And uh, they included some songs which were mainly on the, their first album, which was called High Voltage. So you get You Ain't Got a Hold on Me, Show Business, Soul Stripper, and of course their cover of Baby Please Don't Go. So a decent five song EP. And as always, comes with a nice printed inner sleeve with all kinds of photos and liner notes. So really, really glad to have this, and this will sit next to my copy of Flick of the Switch because chronologically, this came out after that, so very happy to have it. And up next is a little bit of a newer album for me to dig into. I like a lot of the songs that are on it already, but hearing it as a whole, this will be a first time. And um, it's funny, one of the songs on this album I heard live when I saw him live a couple years ago. And then I remember I was driving around with a girlfriend and I had the Beatles station on and I heard this particular song. Um, and I loved it. And I was like, you know, which album is that off of? And then it turns out I found out it was on this album that had the other song that I like. So I figured it's part of the sale. Might as well. So I'm talking about... Macca, Paul McCartney. This is McCartney 2. So this was, in a way, his second solo album, but not really. If you think about it, his first album was called McCartney. That was by himself. Then after that was Ram. That was Paul and Linda McCartney. Then he went on to do Wings. And then that kind of dissipated towards the end of the 70s. And so he went out fully on his own again and essentially cut his second solo album, which is called McCartney 2. And, of course, the song that I was talking about that I saw him perform live was Temporary Secretary, which I truly love. And then the song that I heard on the Beatles station was uh, Coming Up, which I think is just a great, bouncy, fun song. Um, this is McCartney trying to kind of mess with, like, synthesizers and do a bit uh, more electronic type stuff, which I think is rather quirky and interesting. So I'm rather curious to hear this particular style of uh, McCartney's that he does. Uh, here is the artwork. Faithfully replicated, nice shiny gatefold sleeve, as you can see there. And then we have a printed inner sleeve as well. We have lyrics on this side. And then we have uh, Paul messing with the tape machine with his child just kind of yanking on his shirt on the bottom. Really, really nice photo. I love that photograph. So yeah, this is another great piece to add to my McCartney collection. And I'm uh, really excited to give this album a spin. Paul McCartney's McCartney 2. Alright, so here is a record that I picked up at the FYE that I work at. And um, I did not see myself picking this album up. It was kind of a case of, I remember seeing it there. And if it's there, great, I'll snag it. If not, no big deal. And uh, I guess luck was on my side in this case. So... I remember when this uh, particular record came into the store and when it came out, because it was a new release this year. It came out around May of 2019. And when I saw it, I thought, oh, that's interesting. I can see how it would sort of have its, you know, its audience and its appeal. Uh, but then it wasn't until I started watching the show that it started to kind of click and it made sense why people would be into this particular record. And, um, of course, aside from the subjects and the plots that this show was kind of based around, the music gravitated me, and it is so bone-chilling, and it's so fitting for this time of year around Halloween. Um, it's not by, by any means a Halloween type of album, but it suits the mood. 
I am talking about the soundtrack to, and you guys are probably going to laugh, Unsolved Mysteries. Um, honestly, the cases that this show covers is just so interesting, and just to get behind the sort of psyche of some of the people that you know, commit crimes, disappear, and whatnot. It's just so interesting in, in, from a human consciousness perspective. Uh, but the music on this is just absolutely, like I said, bone-chilling. It is so eerie and just so... You kind of don't want to be alone in your house when you listen to this. Um, it's very unsettling, but then again, very enjoyable as well. Uh, so this is just a basic single LP collection of a bunch of songs based off of uh, certain scenarios that are showcased in the show comes with a nice kind of gatefold and you can see someone's in bed watching TV but then again you see can you catch it there's like a little hand reaching out in the in the window there it's so creepy now this is an FYE exclusive pressing uh, which is limited to 500 as you see there's a printed inner sleeve which kind of has like TV dialogue on the screen like the uh, what's going to be played for the for the night schedule, which is kind of cool. But what makes this unique is that it is on sort of clear glow in the dark kind of vinyl. It's obviously like a translucent clear kind of vinyl, but you see flecks of like glow in the dark, you know, colors in there. You really need to shine a good light on it for a while, and then shut your lights off in order to get the effect. So I'm probably not going to feature it in. Uh, in this little haul but believe me I tried it it just takes a little while but it's kind of faint like it's not a full-on glow-in-the-dark kind of album you just see kind of spots but um yeah let's just say I'm gonna make sure that I'm in good company when I play this album because like I said the music is just so eerie but then again it is just so you know captivating altogether so Kind of an interesting album uh, to have in the collection. I don't have any TV show soundtracks, so this is perhaps a first. Unsolved Mysteries. All right, now we have some King Crimson vinyl releases, which came out fairly recently. Um, I believe these came out on Friday the 11th and uh, just came in today on Tuesday the 15th. Uh, ever since 2010, uh, DGM and Robert Fripp have been putting the Crimson catalog back onto vinyl. It's been a very um, successful reissue campaign, and I did a whole video talking about these reissues. If you want to peel back on my channel and check that video out, please go ahead and do so. And um, the studio catalog is now complete and is all out on vinyl. And um, with this last batch of albums uh, that got released, um, they were actually vinyl debut releases because there were no vinyl uh, versions made available at the time when these albums first came out. So the first one I'm going to show you guys is 1995's Thrack. Now, this album is the only one to feature what is called the Double Trio Formation, which uh, consists of Robert Fripp, Adrian Ballou, Trey Gunn, Tony Levin, Pat Mestolato, and Bill Bruford. So you have two guitarists, two bassists, and two drummers. And you think, how could that work? And when you listen to this album and you hear the way that it's mixed, it just works perfectly because on the opening track, Room, everything starts out right in the center and then you sense the sort of diversion and you have a trio of guys on one side and a trio on the other just clashing and meshing with each other. Um, it's such an interesting listening experience. And you can essentially see the outline of the double trio formation on the back here with the way the uh, band members are listed so you pretty much know which members are playing on which side. Uh, notable tracks on this album uh, is of course the opening track Room, the single Dinosaur, Walking On Air, the um, title track Inner Garden, uh, Sex, Sleep, Eat, Drink, Dream. Uh, musically, it's kind of a mesh between the old heavy sound that they established on Red and the sort of 80s sort of rock gamelan sound which was found on Discipline. Now, these, uh, this last batch of uh, King Crimson Studio releases on vinyl are expanded editions. Uh, with this album, uh, the album Thrack um, takes up three sides, and then on the fourth side, we get some tracks which were on the EP called uh, Room, which came out back in 1994, which was kind of the precursor to Thrack. 
And then we also get the track um, Inner Garden, uh, the complete version, which is found on the Thrak box set of everything, the studio and live stuff. Uh, nice gatefold sleeve here, which has uh, lyrics and credits to the album and some artwork. All the records come in these really nice nifty printed polyline sleeves, which um, pretty much promotes the catalog, the tour boxes, the live releases, the boxes full of everything and whatnot. We have uh, nice 200 gram vinyl pressings with uh, custom center labels for each side, consisting of the album artwork. And then we also have the second one here, which I'll show. Very nice stuff. Absolutely gorgeous pressing quality. Uh, these were also mastered by uh, Jason Mitchell over at Loud Mastering, who has been doing all of the recent mastering jobs for Crimson. And the next album up is The Reconstruction of Light. Now this is an updated version of the album The Construction of Light which came out in 2000. And to kind of touch into the band's history, the double trio, as they say, fractalized and they did these things called projects which were like little expansion groups uh, which pretty much gathered up ideas to bring to the table uh, to make this album. And um, kind of more so in the discipline-y sort of um, gamelan kind of sound, you get things like the title track, Construction of Light, uh, Fractured, which is kind of in line with the song Fracture from Starless and Bible Black. You also get um, Lark's Tongues and Aspect Part 4. You get the song Heaven and Earth, which is from Project X, which was part of the project sort of thing. And then what makes this the expanded edition, since the album takes up three sides of vinyl, is that we have um, a fourth side of some live cuts from the live construction album. Uh, we have Mastelotius SS Blasticus and the Deception of the Thrush. So uh, rather nice artwork. This, of course, was not the original artwork. Uh, this is actually from the Heaven and Earth box set, which focuses on the uh, sort of late 90s into 2000s crimson period gatefold sleeve which opens up we have lyrics and credits here and we have a nice picture of the band here and then we have uh this new artwork spread over the uh, center labels now what makes this the reconstruction of light is uh when it came time to do the stereo and 5.1 mixes for the box set as well as the 40th anniversary CD DVD configurations um, they could not locate the drum um, masters when it came to mixing it so uh, Pat Mestolato, uh went back and re-recorded the drum tracks and um, I have not listened to the original Construction of Light uh, from what I understand it kind of benefits it a little bit because I would say this is perhaps maybe the sore album of the Crimson Catalog. It's not too highly regarded. And also I should mention um, that after the projects uh, were done, um, Bill Bruford left and then Tony Levin had some obligations. So the lineup for this album and the next one that I'm going to show is Fripp, uh, Baloo, Gun, and Mastelotto. So that's the reconstruction of light. And then up next we have 2003's the Power to Believe, which is, as of now, the last King Crimson studio album. Uh, this album is insane. Uh, it starts off with uh, Power to Believe acapella, part one, which is kind of spread across the duration of the album. Level five, which is essentially Lark's Tongues and Aspect, part five, which is a, part of my French, fucking powerhouse of a track. It's absolutely insane what these guys do on this track. Eyes Wide Open, Electric, um, Happy With What You Have To Be Happy With, um, just absolutely great early 2000s Crimson stuff. Now this is expanded to feature the Sustainzy uh, Suite, and then on the fourth side we have some tracks from the Happy With What You Have To Be Happy With EP, which came out before this album came out. So here is the artwork, and then we have a gatefold sleeve, which has credits and a really nice modern shot of the band. 
and then showcase the uh, center labels here. Really nice stuff. And I'm honestly really excited to dig deeper into these albums because when it comes to Crimson, granted, it took me a while to grasp onto the 80s stuff. And when I did, I just went headfirst into it. And um, this particular period is not one that I am fully wrapped around yet. I would say, if anything, I am very much fond of the stuff found on Thrak and Power to Believe. Construction of Light, not so much. But in terms of some of the, you know, deeper tracks uh, that don't really get discussed too much, that aren't found on compilations, um, it's going to be a fresh listen indeed. And I'm actually quite excited because I've heard wonderful things about some of the tracks um, on these uh, albums. Particularly Deception of a Thrush is highly regarded, as well as parts of the Power to Belief suite on this album. So, really glad to see them complete the studio catalog back on vinyl. And I uh, wonder what other uh, reissues they'll do. We shall see in the future. But absolutely good stuff. So glad to have all of these albums on vinyl to complete my King Crimson Studio Collection. Alright, so here is a rather interesting record that I just added to my collection. And it actually stands out as being the first non-music record in my collection. Which is a bit unusual, but it stands out for that reason. Um, I am a huge fan of this particular uh, series slash franchise. And when I saw that this was getting a release, I kind of thought to myself, do records of this type actually exist? And it turns out they do. So I just was not aware all this time. So I mainly picked it up just because I'm a fan of the series. And also, since I'm a vinyl collector, it serves two great purposes. So what exactly am I talking about? It is the vinyl audiobook to Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, The Bad Beginning, which is the first book in the 13-book series. Now, if you are a bibliophile, I'm sure you know what this series is about, but to those that are not aware, it follows the trials and tribulations of a set of orphans, Violet, Klaus, and Sonny, uh, labeled as the Baudelaire Orphans, and uh, also follows the activities of the main antagonist, which is Count Olaf, who is after the children's uh, huge massive fortune because the, um, the children's parents passed away in a fire and they're sent to live with a whole bunch of different guardians and whatnot. Um, just a very interesting in-depth narrative. And um, I loved the book since I was a kid. Um, everyone was into like Harry Potter and wizardry and this and that. For me, I really gravitated towards this because it just had this really cool gothic steampunk vibe to it. And uh, when I saw that the audiobooks were getting a vinyl release, I figured, might as well not. And then when I did my research, turns out that uh, Amy Poehler did a vinyl audiobook for her book. So I figured, I guess there's a market for everything, I suppose. Uh, what's really cool about this is that the, um, the narrator is actually Tim Curry of Rocky Horror and uh, Home Alone fame. So I think, thought that was pretty cool. And it's funny because there wasn't too much information out there uh, for this particular pressing. And on the spines of all of the books, as well as this cover, there's this blue band. Well, not for every book, but there's, there's like a different color for each book. And it kind of got me thinking, to make this kind of unique, it would be cool if they did um, colored vinyl for each, I, I suppose they're doing the entire series, for each book and match it with the, sp the color of the spines. And needless to say... When I took the record out, it does indeed come on colored vinyl. Now, this is a bit more of a teal aqua kind of color, so it doesn't really match the spine too much, but it somewhat does in a lighter shade. And I absolutely love the center labels. You got Count Olaf there on the A side, and then you have the Orphans on the B side. So like I said, I take it that they'll be doing uh, the entire series on vinyl audiobook. Um... And I'll, you bet I will be buying it all because, like I said, I'm a big fan of the series. And also, um, I don't think I've actually ever heard the audiobooks. I never have. So um, this will definitely be interesting. Uh, kind of cool to deviate from the norm of having essentially all music in my collection. And uh, brunch out and have some vinyl audiobooks with Lemony Snicket's Series of Unfortunate Events, The Bad Beginning. All right, so here are some albums that I got with my Amazon Prime card points that I accumulated over the past month or so. Um, interestingly enough, both of these albums are compilations. Um, I kind of noticed that once I was ready to check out and just finish the deal. Uh, but I was kind of contemplating on what I wanted to get. And it's always a situation where if I'm given an amount, 
I'm always going back and forth over, you know, what albums do I want? What have I got lately? You know, try to get all different artists, whatnot. And um, needless to say, I actually got an album from an artist that I already have one album of. Um, and I definitely want to get more in my collection. It's just a matter of figuring out where to go, where to start, and where to branch off to from there. So I figured I'd just take this opportunity to actually dig into the band's earlier catalog when they were on a different label with R.E.M.'s Eponymous. Now, this came out back in 1988. This was right around the time of the Green album, which was the band's first album with Warner Brothers, and this was at the end of their term with IRS Records. They put together this little compilation, and to be honest, just right off the bat, like I know the songs, Radio Free Europe, of course, um, the one I love, and it's the end of the world as we know it, but aside from those notable tracks, you know, from the early period, I'm not fond of much else, and I'm actually quite curious as to see what is beyond just those main sort of hits that everyone kind of knows of from this uh, period. Um, also, we have a young Michael Stipe on the back, which kind of looks like the kid from Stranger Things. You can kind of see the resemblance there. Comes in a printed uh, inner sleeve. We get uh, track credits on this side, and we have some uh, photographs of the band members here. I'm going to try to be very careful extracting this because this paper material is very frigid. And here we have the silver irs label there which is quite cool very very nice so so i'm sure once i give this a listen it'll determine you know where should i go from rem's early stuff if anything document i know is the notable one which has the one i love and it's the end of the world but in terms of everything else i'm not quite fond of so perhaps when i give this a listen that will change so i got some rem and up next is actually a band that I don't have any records of. So this is a first. And um, to be honest, when I saw which tracks were on this, I was kind of contemplating getting this band's, like, two records. I'll point out those albums once I explain what's on this album. Uh, but I could have been well off with either one, but I figured, you know what, let's just get the best of both worlds, essentially. And I am talking about... Steve Miller Band, Greatest Hits 74 to 78. Um, this is just one of those albums that you can play it to any classic rock fan and they know exactly what it is. Or just essentially anyone that grew up listening to classic rock radio, you know this stuff. You have Swing Town, Jungle Love, Take the Money and Run, Rockin' Me, The Joker, of course, Fly Like an Eagle, Jet Airliner. I mean, this is just all fantastic stuff. Now, this compilation only covers mainly two albums, the Fly Like an Eagle album and the Book of Dreams album, and the Joker being off of the, the uh, Joker album. So I was contemplating getting Fly Like an Eagle or Book of Dreams. Either one would have been fine, but I figured, you know what, I might as well snag this. And also, I was kind of feeling the Steve Miller mood because uh, my boss at work is a big Steve Miller fan, and uh, when we work together, we always play this uh, CD in, in the store, so... Uh, it's kind of thanks to him that I decided to take the plunge on this. And also my parents are big fans as well. Uh, this actually comes with a rather nice uh, printed inner sleeve with a nice fisheye photo of a... Looks like looks like it's a football stadium. Does it say on the back where it, where it is? I'm not quite sure. And we have some shots of the band across the borders, which is really cool. And then the record itself comes in a nice polyline sleeve. Nice custom labels as well, as you can see there. You get the horse figure. Very, very nice. So to be honest, I mean, I'm already pretty, you know, well fond of the stuff on this album. So if anything, it's just a matter of getting this some of the uh, other albums in the Steve Miller Band's catalog. But uh, nonetheless, I am very, very excited to give this album a spin on vinyl. Steve Miller Band's Greatest Hits, 74 to 78. Okay, so I normally don't showcase 7 inches that I acquire over time on the channel, but this is a rather notable one that I want to share with you guys. So when the pre-order link dropped for this particular 7 inch, I jumped on it immediately. And within about a half hour after I placed my order, it completely sold out on the website. And as of right now, last I checked, because I knew I was expecting this today, I looked on Discogs, it's going for... 
three times what I paid for, which granted is not a substantial amount of money, but it just goes to show that this thing does have some value and it is rather cool if you're into the band and you know the storyline behind it. Um, it is Ghost, Seven Inches of Satanic Panic. Now this includes two songs, uh, Kiss the Go Go and Mary on a Cross. And if you follow Ghost and their sort of storyline with the Prakel album cycle, you'll know exactly what this release is all about. You know, Pop in a Hill was an in incarnation of Ghost back in 69, and they did this single, and they're re-releasing it for the 50th anniversary. It's all brilliant storyline stuff, but in all reality, Tobias Forge <laughs> went in the studio and cut two new tracks as Ghost and... Here it is, but um, I absolutely love the 60s inspired uh, cover, which is reflective of the song itself. Here is the back, and I'll showcase the vinyl itself. It doesn't come in an inner sleeve, which is unfortunate. I'm definitely gonna have to put one in a polyline sleeve. But as you see there, just basic black and white Loma Vista uh, labels. To be honest, I mean, as basic as the labels look, they, I kind of like it. It kind of gives off that old school, you know, label look from like back in the day, which is quite nice. But um, I'm really happy to uh, have gotten my hands on this. Uh, there's another variant out there for this release. It's part of the Prakel Exalted box, which comes with the Prakel album and like a die cut cover, a colored vinyl with an illustration booklet. And it's numbered and such. I know I have one at the FYE that I work at. And the only thing that's tempting me about it is the the photo book that you get with all the live shots and it's numbered and you get the single and the album, but it's just, I'm already satisfied with what I have already. And also I think this cover just works much, much better with it. But nonetheless, I'm just very happy to have it. Ghost, Seven Inches of Satanic Panic. All right, so it's kind of funny how uh, when I was showing off the David Bowie Welcome to the Blackout release that I was on a manhunt to get the Cracked Actor release, which came out the year before Welcome to the Blackout. And uh, needless to say, I succeeded. So this is David Bowie's Cracked Actor, Live Los Angeles, 1974. Uh, this came out as part of Record Store Day 2017. And it's interesting how I got this. So... I found a Discog seller that was selling a copy of this, uh, BG Plus near Mint. It was open, played it a few times, but it was still in great shape. And it was being sold for, I guess you could say, an okay price. And I thought that that would have been the best possible deal I could snag, so I placed an order on it. The guy sends me a message with a um, order cancellation notice saying, I sold this back in, in May, and uh, Discogs just didn't, you know adjust my inventory so sorry and it's no big deal but coincidentally at the same time another seller had posted it for sale still sealed and at a cheaper justifiable price so i guess someone's looking over me um this release is pretty much reflective of the david live album which came out back in 74 at the tower theater in philly um a couple of differences uh the notable ones being uh, the appearance of the track It's Gonna Be Me, uh, which was not released at the time. I think it appeared first as one of the Ryko Disc uh, bonus tracks, which was in like the 90s. And then there's also the re um, the remaking of John I'm Only Dancing, which is like in a more dance kind of vein, which is called John I'm Only Dancing parentheses again. But other than that, it's pretty much reflective of the David Live album. And uh, at the time when this first came out, I didn't get it just because it was so similar. But as I mentioned, as you become more of a collector, your rules start to change. And you start needing to get different shows and variants that might be similar to each other. Things like that. But needless to say, I am very happy that I have this. And um, this is um, becoming quite scarce to find. Between this and Welcome to the Blackout, this is the one... Uh, that is perhaps the most valuable. I don't know if it's just because it's a year older or it's covering a more classic kind of period, but still awesome to have. Comes in a nice triple gatefold sleeve, nice photographs, really nice stuff. Um, this is a three LP set, and I'll showcase the first one just so you can see the labels. And... Um, it's kind of modeled after the old school RCA thing, except you have the Bowie logo from the Diamond Dogs album, which is from where this uh, show took place. 
which is very cool. And this is indeed a five-sided live release, and I'll show you what they did for the six-side. If you own a copy of this, I'm sure you know what's coming. So, here's the last side, and depending on the angle, I hope I can, you guys can see this. You see it? There, there you go, you can pretty much see it. It's a uh, Bowie logo etching from the Diamond Dogs uh, album cover. You can see there, sorry that you can see my ceiling fan. But there you go, very, very nice. Now this recording was, um, I believe it was a radio broadcast that was done at the time. And uh, Tony Visconti got the multi-tracks and um, remixed it for release. Uh, but as like as I mentioned that there's companies out there like you know all those like labels that take radio broadcasts and just put them out and license them. There is a release out there which is of the same show, which I believe is the original broadcast uh, that's on the market. I came close to getting that just because it's quasi official with this release, and I'm very glad that I did. I'm glad that I got the real deal, and I cannot wait to give this album a spin. And aside from Cracked Actor, um, I have an Amazon find I'm going to show you guys. And uh, this was a result of looking on, on my wish list, my Amazon list, at 2 in the morning. And just seeing how, like, it'll list the, the item that you selected to add to your list. And then it'll also list, like, the cheapest available price from other sellers. And I had added this particular pressing onto my list. And I, kn I know what the value is, because releases like this are expensive kind of to begin with and i saw that there was a cheap copy available and i'm thinking oh let's see what what it's about it was an Air amazon warehouse copy used but like new and i thought let me take a chance on it because sometimes depending on amazon they might send you like a wrong version of what you had originally ordered like let's say for vinyl it could be like an older pressing or just something that is not what you intended on receiving on what was listed but needless to say, when I opened this up, it was still sealed. Check this out. I paid $25 for this. Billy Joel Turnstiles. The MoFi pressing. This sucker was still sealed. And I understand why that it was used. Um, I, I guess if you can say it's because of the seam split on the spine. But to be honest... Knowing how valuable these MoFi pressings are, I mean, right off the bat, only like costing like $35. This was being sold for on Amazon for like $45 to $50. So it is just crazy that I got this for an amazing price, still sealed. Granted, with the minus, in, like the, the small imperfection, but to be honest, it's not enough to whinge and moan about. But uh, on this record, you get some classics like Say Goodbye to Hollywood, uh, New York State of Mine, um, Miami 2017. Um, this album is full of fantastic songs, and it wasn't until they had the Billy Joel station on um, Satellite XM Radio that um, they, were, they were doing this segment on Turnstiles, and Billy was talking about each song and just describing each song, and then they would play it, and just, it's brilliant, brilliant stuff. Comes with a nice gatefold sleeve, which has lyrics here. Nice thick cardstock sleeve. And as always, you get a nice little folder with advertisings, rice paper sleeves, nice heavyweight vinyl. There's the label there. Now this one was mastered by uh, Rob Loverdi. All of the other MoFi pressings that I have were done by Craig Wunderlich. And that is for both the standard MoFi's and also the silver label uh, releases. And real quick, once I get this back into the jacket, I'll also show you which number I have because this is indeed numbered like all other MoFi pressings. As you can see there, this is copy number 3,421. So very, very happy that I was able to snag this rather valuable pressing for a great price and I cannot wait to play this sucker. Billy Joel Turnstiles. 
All right, so I was going to do a separate video uh, showcasing this particular set of releases that came out this month. Uh, wasn't quite sure when they all would come in, uh, but I just decided to place it right in the big hall, uh, mainly because I do not want to push back any uh, content uh, that has been sitting around waiting to be uploaded, some of it stemming as far back as summertime. But nonetheless, I'm going to show you guys what I got as part of this year's Rocktober campaign. So Rhino Records uh, always does their Rocktober campaign every year in the month of October, where basically they reissue albums by certain artists on their roster, limited quantities, colored vinyl, all that good stuff. Uh, Bullmoose.com always offers pre-orders for those releases, so I took a uh, look at the list of releases and pretty much got everything that I had set out to get, um, very happy to say. So first is uh, something that I don't think has ever come out. I don't think this is, this is a reissue. I think this is specifically made for this campaign. Uh, this is Dream Theater's Pull Me Under 12-inch single. Uh, so the A-side is the song Pull Me Under, which is the band's only hit and also perhaps their most notable song. And on the B-side, you get the song Metropolis Part 1, which is just an absolutely fantastic song and a staple in Dream Theater's career. This is cut at 45 RPM, and it comes on really nice yellow vinyl with nice custom labels. Really cool release. You get two of you know, the band's most well-known songs on one slab of vinyl, and it also sounds very good at 45. I was quite pleased with how this sounded, so it's cool to add this to my vinyl and Dream Theater collection. And the one big artist that got a major emphasis this year was Deep Purple, and they went ahead and reissued Who Do We Think We Are, Come Taste the Band, along with Made in Japan and Burn. And I already had a European purple vinyl copy of Made in Japan that I had gotten kind of recently somewhat. And I also already had the Friday music version of Burn. So I saw this as a prime time to get uh, the other two albums that I just showcased uh, from this campaign. So first, who do we think we are? This is the last album, studio album, to be recorded by the famous mark ii lineup and uh this is one that kind of goes under the radar because this kind of came out around the time of made in japan and that was a huge success so this album didn't really get a whole lot of you know attention i guess you could say um and also you can kind of sense that the ideas kind of lacking in places it's not of a, as strong as an album as machine head but it still has some really cool songs um the notable one on here is Woman from Tokyo. That was the single off of this. Uh, Mary Long is probably my favorite song on the record. Rat Bat Blue, Our Lady is a cool closer. It's a decent record, and I'm glad that I got to hear it for the first time. This is one that I've been just curious on checking out. Gatefold Sleeve here, which has uh, newspaper clippings over the years. We also get an insert, which has the lyrics. And the vinyl itself comes on very aptly colored deep purple vinyl. And you got the uh, green Warner Brothers label. And after doing a little bit of research, um, this is actually the same uh, European reissues that uh, we got, I believe it was last year. Um, like I said, I got the Made in Japan um, purple vinyl copy. This is essentially the same thing. They just gave it a proper American release, which I think is cool because getting them as imports was kind of expensive. Some of the prices on those imports were rather high, so I thought that bringing them into this campaign would be a great affordable way to get them within the U.S. And then we also have Come Taste the Band. Now, this was the last album to come out out of the sort of classic early Deep Purple period. Uh, Richie Blackmore is out. You got Tommy Bolin in, who was a fantastic guitar player. Um, not as strong of a player as Richie, but he adds his own flair to the band's musicality. And of course, you already have um, David Coverdale and Glenn Hughes, and of course, John Lordy and Pace. 
Uh, very much in the sort of funk rock direction in places, which is pretty much what Coverdale and Hughes were into. And then with what Tommy Bolin had done in James Gang, it was just the kind of perfect, you know, meshing of influences. Uh, but honestly, this is a rather good record. Um, Coming Home is a great rockin' opener. Getting Tighter is my favorite on this. Um, I Need Love is good. Love Child. This time around is fantastic. You got, you know, Hughes and Coverdale trading lead vocals. You Keep On Moving is a great closer. Just, it's really, really good. Uh, comes in a gatefold sleeve. Nice little photo collage of the band right there. And then you also get a uh, printed inner sleeve with the lyrics. Of course, purple vinyl. And then this time around, if you know your label history, we have the Palm Tree Warner Brothers label there. Which is quite nice. And both of these Deep Purple releases sound absolutely uh, fantastic. Just very nice, punchy, a lot of power really can't go wrong so if you're quite curious on uh how these recent purple reissues sound you definitely got to give these a shot because there's been quite a number of them over the years i may have to do a video on that sometime down the road all right and up next is a film soundtrack uh this is a uh movie that is celebrating its 40th anniversary and uh this is a movie that i loved seeing uh, when I was a kid and still to this day, it's just a great fun rock and roll film and that is the soundtrack to Rock and Roll High School, which of course features the Ramones um, You got a great soundtrack on here. Of course you have the Ramones on here with the title track of the film I want you around those were like the two new songs and then you have a live medley which is taken from the live concert portion of the film you get stuff from Nick Lowe, um, Devo, Chuck Berry, Tom Runger, and Alice Cooper, uh, PJ Souls, who is like the main protagonist in the film, does a version of Rock and Roll High School. Uh, so it's cool to see this get a reissue as part of its 40th anniversary. And what's really cool about this particular pressing is that it comes on advertised as fire colored vinyl. And it kind of has like a little bit of like a sunburst kind of look to it. So you can see like there's yellow at the core. Then it kind of ripples out into some like red and orange. Comes on the uh, classic Sire Records label there. Absolutely gorgeous looking pressing. And uh, just very, very nice. It's This soundtrack is going to be an absolute fun listen when I get around to playing it. And last but not least, um, this is a reissue that I think um, us Americans have not seen. This has come out overseas in England, but we have never seen this in our native land. And it's cool that they actually went ahead and reissued this album in a deluxe vinyl format. And perhaps they will do the other albums um, which feature this particular vocalist in the band's catalog. It is Black Sabbath's Dehumanizer. Now, this came out back in 1992. Uh, Ronnie James Dio comes back up to the vocal mic for this album and uh, delivers just a another classic-sounding Dio Sabbath album. You get things like Computer God, TV Crimes, uh, Time Machine, which was on the Wayne's World soundtrack, um, the song I is just an absolutely fantastic song. Um, just a great solid record. And this is the deluxe vinyl version. So we get the main album on one LP. And then we get a second LP of various um, single versions, uh, B-sides. And then we also get a lot of live tracks uh, from that uh, tour as well. Now this... I believe got the deluxe treatment on both CD and vinyl back in like the early 2010s. Um, I think Sanctuary had put out a bunch of deluxe versions of Black Sabbath albums with alternate audio, bonus stuff, and this was just one of them. And um, like I said, we never got a release of this in the US, so it's cool that they went ahead and did that. Wonder if they'll do the rest of the Dio catalog, because that Dio catalog is uh, needing a uh, reissue uh, very, very soon. So. Here's the artwork. 
Then we have a nice gatefold of some pictures of the band. And we also have some liner notes here as well, which kind of talks about the album and what was going on at the time. Then we have the album here, which comes on a nice sort of picture uh, center label on this side. And then everything's listed here. Very nice stuff. And I believe, if I'm correct, they went ahead and used the same stampers from um, the overseas vinyl pressing for this, just from what I'm examining. I might be wrong. I'm not an expert when it comes to that kind of stuff, but I think it's the same stampers. And if, and if so, um, it says Baza at Alchemy. Um, Alchemy Mastering has a great set of mastering engineers, so I'm sure this is just going to be an absolutely beautiful uh, sounding uh, pressing. And uh, also just cool to see something outside of the usual Lazy catalog getting a reissue because it seems like when it comes to Sabbath, that's really all we see. So really cool to see this get a reissue and perhaps this might be a hint of what is to come in the future. Black Sabbath's Dehumanizer. And that is what I got as part of this year's Rhino's Rocktober campaign. All right, so during the last part of October, um, I've been on a big doors kick. I don't know what sparked it. It's kind of one of those things where I just start listening to a band that I haven't really listened to in a while, and then I just find myself listening to only them for like a week or so. It's kind of like a flavor of the week kind of thing. Um, my Doors Vinyl Collection is not complete by any means. There's still bits and pieces that I need to kind of fill, uh, but I had my eye on this particular vinyl release of theirs, and I didn't think at first to pick it up when it first came out fairly recently, but um, I don't know, something told me to check it out, and I noticed that it had dropped to $80 on Amazon, which is the lowest price it has dropped down to, and something told me inside that I could do better than that, so I didn't pull the trigger right away, I put it in my like saved for later you know, part of my car and just kept an eye on it. And then, of course, because I'm curious, I go on Discog, see what copies are listed for sale, and I noticed a seller was selling uh, this particular release for 60 bucks. And when you do the math, you you know keep in mind what is featured inside of this set, and also the fact that it is limited and numbered. Uh, it's not a low number, it's a high number, so it's relatively still available to this day. Um, I thought that it resembled remarkably good value. So, what exactly am I talking about? It is the singles box set. Now, this came out back in 2017. I didn't think much of it to pick it up when it first came out, including the CD. I just got the CD like several months ago. And um, something told me to, you know, keep my eyes open for a deal on this. And I'm very glad that I snagged it for a very good price. Uh, you get 27 inch singles um, of all of the door singles. Um, everything from like Break On Through, Let My Fire, People Are Strange going on and on and on and then of course you even get uh some of the post uh morrison singles such as type rope hide ships with sails get up and dance the mosquito the piano bird and then you also get some posthumous stuff like roadhouse blues live which is from american prayer and gloria from the alive she cried album you pretty much get everything here with all kinds of different sleeves and whatnot. So it's a nice package. Uh, the seller had said that um, the the sleeve was VG, VG plus, which is un understandable because like here there's like a dent and then on the bottom right hand corner there's a dent, but it's not too much to uh, make me whinge and moan, but it, the media was listed as near mint and that is exactly what matters. And um all of the records are in perfect condition. Um, like I said, it's limited to 10,000. Uh, it is also numbered. I have copy number 7,316. Opens up just like this. And you also get a nice little sort of poster, which uh, features all of the various single sleeves that the band has used over the years. It's kind of like a like a Beatles one kind of thing. And then here you get all kinds of various credits and a single guide here to kind of guide you through the, uh, the singles as you listen to them. 
And I'll just pull out a couple of examples from this set that I think are really cool. You also get like a nice styrofoam backing to it. Uh, this is the People Are Strange single. I love that picture that they used uh, for this sleeve. I just think that's such an awesome shot. Uh, you get the Break On Through, which utilizes the back cover photo from the first album. Uh, let's see. We also get some generic Electra sleeves here, such as the one for Light My Fire. And let's see. This is the one for Unknown Soldier. Back with We Could Be So Good Together. And what else we have? Yeah, the rest of it is kind of generic in places. And then, of course, all the center labels kind of change with time. So you get the Caterpillar one. Uh, for this is the tree trunk uh, single and such so it's a really cool release uh, glad that I kind of came around to it later on to snag it and uh, just thankful that it's still available and for a very good price and just as I placed the order for this and I paid it um, the shipping and everything I went on the seller's um, page on Discogs just to see what other stuff he had for sale and I noticed that he had this release, and this is another Doors release that I've had my eye on for some time, but it was one that I was kind of changing my mind on all the time, and I'll explain why. And it was pretty much going for half of the retail value, and the retail value is around 65 bucks. so the guy was selling it for about 30 and I thought, holy crap, this is a good deal. So I placed the order, and I thought to myself, crap, I should have you know, looked at his page earlier before I placed the order on the singles box, and I'm like, crap, I'm going to pay double shipping. The guy was very generous enough to uh, send me the invoice and just say, I'll group it with the singles box set, just pay the price of the record in sales tax. So I thought that was really, really awesome. So I am talking about The Doors' self-titled debut. This is the 50th anniversary uh, version which came out back in 2017 and uh, what made me gravitate to this is that the vinyl inside features the mono mix now I only have the stereo mix and of course you need both mono and stereo if you are a bit of a completist so I went ahead and got this and um, I was always going back and forth with getting this particular uh, release of the album and that's simply because with the way that the doors you know catalog is being handled by Rhino and Doors Management because they did this version which is pretty much essentially in the same style as the Ramones reissues where you get the vinyl and the booklet here and the CDs on this side you get both stereo and mono mixes on CD along with uh, songs from the Matrix show which is the first time that the uh, master tapes were used it's a whole backstory this clip is not going to go any longer so it's a whole long story. Anyways, they did this, and then they did the 50th anniversary for Strange Days, and they actually reissued the mono um, version of that album separate in a standalone vinyl release, and they released a two-CD version um, of the stereo and mono mix, which I don't have on hand at the moment. I think it's in my car. So that was kind of the missed opportunity to make it into a similar package like this, then they do Waiting for the Sun and this kind of configuration, two CDs and vinyl. And I had just gotten the 2009 Rhino version before they announced the 50th version. So they've kind of been weird with it. But it plays all right in the end because they actually released the CDs separate in this two CD only version. So that's cool. Maybe they'll do that for the Soft Parade because I already have a vinyl copy of that. But anyways, let's talk about the package. So... Like I said, kind of done in the same style as the Ramones uh, for anniversary reissues. Uh, this is a numbered release as well. I believe this is 10,000 or it might be more than that. This is copy number 8,137. And I'll showcase the vinyl, of course, and the book. The book is very, very nice. You get some very nice uh, photographs of the band. That's an absolutely amazing shot. Love that picture. You can get liner notes from uh, David Frick, who writes for Rolling Stone. And of course, engineer Bruce Botnick uh, adds his two cents, talks about the recording of the album. Very, very nice. 
And then we have the vinyl itself. Mono version comes on the gold Electra label. Now, from what I've read online and what I was able to research, um, I believe they literally took the record store day um, pressing that they did, which was back in like the early 2010s, took the stampers and just repressed them and added to this release. And granted, that pressing that was done for record store day was limited and it's... I, I think it's still easy to come by because, like I said, with the way that the catalog's been handled, I came close to getting just the Record Store Day version and avoiding getting the 50th anniversary and, you know, how they're doing the catalog. It's, it's a bad case of OCD, as you can tell. But nonetheless, it's cool that I have both the stereo and mono uh, version on CD for the first time because I only have the 2007... 40th anniversary remix so this is still a great release to have and i cannot wait to hear how the mono mix sounds on this door self-titled debut 50th anniversary all right so here is something that i got from rollinrecords.com uh, this is the first of many 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 packages that i ordered from him on his site uh be sure to stay tuned to see uh in future videos what i got from him i got a couple of bootleg videos that'll be coming your way within the coming weeks um, he is running a 25% off sale on his entire site uh, simply because um, he is going to Amsterdam sometime in November uh, to like the biggest record fair that's going on in the world and uh, he's clearing out some inventory so he can bring some stuff from the record fair to sell onto his site and I have combed through it many 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 times to see if there was anything that I wanted for my collection and um, it was cool when I found this particular record because um, kind of coincided with the Doors kick that I've been on lately, as you saw with the previous other records that you just uh, saw. Um, it's not a bootleg, but it's not really official. Um, I'm talking about the Doors Stockholm 68. Uh, this is a radio broadcast uh, from the band's only European tour back in 68. Uh, this was broadcasted on Sphergis Radio. I am sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, and this is actually quite a unique show because um, they do some stuff that they normally don't do live and some really cool bits and pieces. Um, you got Morrison kind of vamping on Mac the Knife during the intro to Alabama song. Um, you get versions of Your Lost Little Girl, uh, Wild Child, which was pretty much brand new at the time. Um, and then, of course, you get your usual when the music's over, Love Me Two Times, The End, you know, Light My Fire, Unknown Soldier, Five to One, all those great door songs. I gotta say, I do like the artwork. It's, it is rather nice for being a recording that's licensed to one of those labels that just puts out a bunch of radio broadcasts. And uh, we get a gatefold sleeve here with various photos and a little excerpt from an article from Beat Instrumental back in October of 68. Uh, it's a double LP set, comes in nice polyline sleeves, and if I can get it out, I can show you what the labels look like. It's also a very nice 180 gram vinyl pressing, which looks nice. You get a nice picture label there, and then you get the text on the other side, and the other record looks um, exactly like this. It's the same labels, just the different text for the songs, so it looks absolutely stellar cannot wait to play this and uh like i said stay tuned in the coming weeks to see uh all kinds of cool bootlegs that i got from his site as part of his sale absolutely good stuff cannot wait to play this bad boy the doors stockholm 68 all right so happy halloween everyone as you can see i got the uh Alice Scooper makeup on. Uh, the mall that I work at gave us like last minute notice uh, yesterday that we could dress up for Halloween, despite the fact uh, we did a Halloween event on the Saturday prior. So I decided to uh, pick up some black uh, makeup over at Spirit Halloween and uh, do myself up. And let's just say a lot of people liked it. So uh, the last batch of albums I'm going to show you guys are some Amazon finds. One of them was a price drop and one had a coupon that dropped the price to I think its lowest point that it's ever been at. So, And they're also, um, it's the same artist for both of these albums. So the first one is Aerosmith, 
Done With Mirrors. This was the sort of reunion album which came out back in 1985. This is when Joe Perry and Brad Whitford uh, came back into the fold and um, wasn't quite the strong comeback, you know, that would later be defined with like permanent vacation, but this was kind of a hint of what was to come. I mean, they were back, you know, in terms of the members and the camaraderie, but um, definitely um, they had to kind of get off the hard stuff and get back to making a focused record, which came with permanent vacation and pump. But nonetheless, it's a good rocking album. Uh, you get Let the Music Do the Talking, which was originally done by the Joe Perry Project as a solo piece. So they did a band arrangement of it. And you also get uh, She's on Fire, Gypsy Boots, all kinds of cool rock and Aerosmith tunes. And uh, as you can probably see, it has the, uh, the whole mirror kind of look to the cover throughout the sleeve even on the inner sleeve as well, which is cool that they replicated that. Nice picture of the band. So very glad that I got this. And this dropped to around 13 bucks. I thought that was a good deal for this because um, this is like the next album that I need in my uh, 80s Aerosmith catalog. So I'm happy to get this. And the next one is, um, it was regularly listed at like 18 bucks, uh, but it had a $4 coupon, which dropped, uh, dropped it down to 14. And it's a double LP set, so I figured $14 for a double album is not too bad. And this is Aerosmith's Nine Lives. Now, this actually got reissued um, at the same time with Live Bootleg, as you saw earlier in this haul. And I didn't get this just because if I was to pick one or the other, it was going to be Live Bootleg. Can't really get everything when it comes out brand new, but um, happy that I got this uh, for a pretty sweet deal. Um, this includes uh, Falling in Love is Hard on the Knees, uh, Hole in My Soul, Full Circle, Pink is like the notable hits, and then we actually get some bonus cuts on this. Uh, I believe we got, um, let's see, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing is added on here. It's like an extra track to sort of fill up the side. Um, artwork is nicely replicated. There's a picture of the band in the middle there. Uh, I don't think that was on the original CD. I'll have to double check. It's been a while since I last saw it. And we have two LPs, uh, credits and such on one side here. And then on the other sides of the uh, inner sleeves, we have the artwork that goes with each song on the album, which has all kinds of cat imagery and such. So yeah, really happy that I got these records for a very sweet deal and uh, believe that this haul ended on a rather good note with some nice Aerosmith additions to the vinyl collection. So there you go. That is my vinyl haul of all the records that I acquired within the months of September and October of this year, 2019. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video. And most importantly, keep the record spinning.